Thursday, June the 22nd, 2023, the day after Litha, or the longest day, summer solstice, and I'm down in Kent, Heva, about to undertake book one, walk 19, which I last did in February, February the 1st, 2011, on the old mobile phone. So uh, massively in need of an update. Yet another one. There are quite a few that I did on the mobile phone, unfortunately. But that was the way it was back then. I didn't have a handy cam. So, uh, got a cracking day today. Bit oppressive in a sense that the humidity is quite high. Um, some cloud up there which may or may not get worse this afternoon per the Met and uh, once again we've got a odd wind direction northerly northwesterly today or westerly northwesterly so there's not the nice cooling element to it that there was last week gonna have a temperature of around 27 today this afternoon it is round about 12 noon now, um, so I'm hoping to get this done by around 6 to be on the 6.20 and it could well be from Tombridge. Like last week's walk, I'll have an option uh, later on in the walk either to finish this at Lye, which would make a 9 mile walk, or in Tombridge, which would make around 10.5 as, I'm a, as I plan to miss out the lunchtime stop pub at Chiddingstone and its castle. There would normally be three castles on this walk, but I'll likely only see two of them, Heva and Penshurst, which is uh, actually a country house really, and it's in Penshurst where I plan taking my lunch today. As you can hear in the background, uh, unfortunately at this point we're in the flight path of Gatwick. Seems to be a plane every two minutes currently. I was hoping to get away with um, their background noise, but obviously I've waffled on too long. And it was very nice to get off the train and be greeted by a black cap song and then a chiff chaff. One of these stations is very rural, which is great. So hopefully we're straight off the train into the countryside. Let's crack on, see what awaits. Interesting feature here <coughs> in the station car park. First class carriage. And Heaver Station is now an office block by the looks of it. One called Heaver Halt and the other the old station. And there you go, a pretty decent Wilden Vista already as I uh, walk out of the station up into Chippens Lane. Wonderful. Yeah, as you can see, business centre. So after 50 yards outside a property called Sandfield Farm, we do a left and straight away we're on the walk. Excellent. Love this type of walk as I mentioned previously. Following these red discs to Heaver Castle. Mmm, lovely smell of freshly mown hay again. Now gathered in mind. And like most sensible creatures today, midday sun and all that, they're in the shade which I am presently, but uh, <laughs> how long that lasts, God knows. A load more in this field as well. Need their coats cut, I think. Plenty of young magpies around at the moment. As you can hear in the background, vacated the nests. Another 
decent vista spoiled by a jet. Now joining the Eden Valley walk. Just make out the spire of St Peter's Church there. Well, what I believe to be St Peter's Church. A couple of hundred yards of road walking here. And once again, this Wilden Lane is quite busy. Half a dozen cars or so have passed me in just those few hundred yards. So I'm not continuing another couple of hundred yards straight up there to see the church, but uh, taking a footpath through here somewhere. And as is so uh, often the case in Kent, first of probably many stalls today, There is St Peter's again, probably all we're going to see of it on this trip today, the spire. Now walking through a cooling tree tunnel to approach a lane. So actually uh, do get a better shot of St Peter's here. So uh, there's some prices for you. Total distance one mile. And opposite the church, as per usual, you've got uh, a pub, this one being the King Henry VIII. We're now going through the grounds of the church via the Lich Gate and this public footpath. So there's a synopsis of what St Peter's is about. saying too much today because uh, this is obviously a popular church and um, any commentary might bring out people in the background so uh, let the visuals do the talking God rest their souls. The highlight of this uh, church, Thomas Bullen, 1538. What a tomb that is, eh? Looking back towards the entrance door. And a little idea of the size of Bullen's tomb. Yeah, lovely place. Particularly on a nice summer's day like today. The field on my left there is apparently used for jousting and archery displays by the castle. 
Yeah, point 11 of the text. You no longer walk over a wooden bridge across the lane, but stay on the lane. There's a diversion here. Clearly the uh, text hasn't been updated at point 11, and I haven't read the comments page yet for any updates. Even the uh, alpacas are in the shade. Pretty good path surfaces thus far. One small section behind me nearer the castle could have been muddy after rain during the winter months. Point 14 of the text, it looks like the uh, style mentioned there has been removed. A little memento here to uh, Northwest Kent Ramblers, and that would have gone up after I last did this walk, interestingly. Already, not much water left in this brook that I'm crossing at the moment. And don't forget, Kent has a hosepipe ban on now. Madness. Point 15 in the text now walking through some nice cooling woodland, as is often the case in the Weald now. Plenty of trees around, lovely. Yeah, the path is cut through rock here, making a, a lovely tunnel effect. It's noticeable how the bird song has dropped off already. I know it's a hot day, but predominantly what I've heard today is the black cap, aside from the jets. So it seems, uh, as per previous years, as soon as midsummer passes, so the birds go into molt and the song declines. Now entering the hamlet of Hill Hoth, where I branch away from the uh, main walk shortly to continue on to Penshurst. Now just past this cottage, the main route goes round that bend into Chiddingstone. But uh, I'm taking this shortcut here, turning right. Good to see. More freshly cut hay, just outside Hill Hoth Farm behind me. Now a private residence by the looks of it. As opposed to a working farm, that means. Once again, the walk notes refer to a style which has now been replaced by a gate, thankfully. So that's a third week running now where walk notes are not quite up to speed with, what, with uh, reality, not getting checked as regularly as they used to be, I don't think. Chiddingstone Church just visible there on my left, and we're definitely not going to be seeing any more of it than we now see. So I'm not going into Chiddingstone. Again, the text refers to a style here, which uh, has been replaced with a kissing gate. So you go left, I believe, to Chiddingstone and um, straight on for Penshurst. Now come out into a large wheat field with the large oak referred to in the text just behind me. First of today's oasts on the horizon there. And as the text suggests, this field crossing could be uh, problematical autumn through to spring. But as I've said before, I wouldn't attempt to uh, tackle these walks during that period anyway. These are, these wilderness wonders are definitely for days like today to enjoy them at their best. As you can see we've got cracks in the soil again. No wonder they've got a uh, hosepipe ban on. Well, I just did see uh, a woman using a hosepipe in her garden. I was about to chastise her but thought, thought better of it. Entering Wellers town, 
which uh, Thetford Forest was last week. Pulled off a sublime concert sire here in the forest. So as you can see there are cattle around somewhere but I thankfully haven't encountered any yet. Can't see me getting through this walk without doing so mind. I wish these jets would disappear, spoiling this walk. And there they are, in the far corner, in the shade thankfully, away from the midday sun, well away from me as well. One good thing about hot summer days, usually. I'm stood on the slab bridge referred to in the text. And it's like one of the two trees referred to in the text is down. But I think the onward journey is clear on the ground. Now crossing over the River Eden, which gives the walk its name, Eden Valley. And the Eden is a tributary of the Medway. God, and if it's not passenger jets, it's little biplanes. Quite a noisy walk today, unfortunately. But not with pleasant bird song. Some lovely um, dragonflies over there. Point 33 of the text, and this is the muddiest section of the walk thus far, walking through this copse uphill. A bit more bird song in here because it's nice and cool. Wren, black cap, and of course a few more jets. I can even hear a blackbird singing, that's good. There's the old black cap. Views back from point 34 of the text. I am using both the text and the uh, GPX track today. Predominantly the text though. About 188 foot up here, at a place called Clapper's Shore on the map. Okay, you've got another 500 yards of road walking ahead of us here, turning right after these steps. And once again, it's amazing how busy this road is. Absolutely incredible how it's changed since I first recorded this walk. I'll probably hardly encounter a car back in 2011. I mean, where are these people going? It's not a school holiday, it's a work day. It's the middle of the afternoon, coming up 2.15. Just don't understand where all this traffic's coming from. Quite annoying, actually. And as we're just entering a 40 mph zone, I must be stood in a 61. Walking past Penzurst Place, which isn't really a castle, but uh, a large stately home. Google that one for more information. And hopefully my lunchtime stop just uh, beyond it. St John the Baptist Penshurst, which is going to be my lunchtime stop if I can find a seat. Not an easy church to get a total shot of really. Small churchyard. Just the one seat in the whole churchyard, which I intend to grab. And thankfully it's quite quiet down here today. Not always the case, because I've been through here several times over the years. Church is open, so we'll grab that after lunch. It's around 2.25 now. 
exactly five mile into the walk, so around halfway of the uh, walk I intend doing anyway. Okay, three o'clock, lunch has been had, and I'm now in the uh, Church of St John the Baptist, Penshurst. Never been inside here previously, despite walking past it a number of times. Quite a roomy feel, spacious feel to this place. Entrance door there. Very nice piano. In front of uh, a very nice organ as well. Some leaded light windows here. I won't walk up there in my boots. What a fantastic ceiling over there. Wonderful. And looking back from the pulpit. As you can see, quite a broad church. And as I previously mentioned, when I filmed this dull table, one of the few in the country remaining. There you've got the houses on stilts that we pass under. There are actually three seats in the churchyard. Two either side of the entrance that I missed. Well, in fact, yeah, four. There's two. There's another one the other side of the entrance. And the one I was on in the shade over there. What's in view of St John the Baptist? And you do get a better view of it from down here, near the stilted houses. You've also got a pub stop in this village, the Leicester Arms, and a tea rooms just further around the corner as well, for those that so wish. So leaving Penzurst behind us, the village at least for now. I'm now following the Eden Valley walk again towards Killick's Bank and Ensfield. And that confirms what I said, around a ten and a half mile walk eventually, I suspect. Another possible lunchtime stop is the porcupine pantry there next to uh, the car park for Penzurst. Parting shot of Penzurst place. Pleasant Lake here on my left, still in Penzurst. Still getting jet noise as well around the, the halfway mark of the walk. Let's hope the second half is a bit quieter. Some lovely lilies over there at the end of the second lake on my left. Now back on the Eden Valley walk and that pheasant's disturbed in his field of spring onions.
just make out Penzer's place there as we ascend looking back whence I've come yeah I could smell this lot at the bottom of the hill before I saw them they're almost uh, on top of my exit at the field gate got past them okay though younger bullocks with Penshurst in the Penshurst in the distance beyond Medway Valley down there on my right high point on this walk today about 224 I'll find out in a second how high I am currently but this is probably not far off it well 192 at the moment as I descend towards those red toll cottages so it's unusual to get kites down here where's he gone but uh, yeah there's one Yeah, too fast for this camera. Crossing over what looks like uh, a recently installed footbridge, or updated version anyway, over a backwater of the River Medway. This one's quite healthy, water level wise. Now walking alongside the Medway, Crossing over the Medway Bridge here. Cattle over there on my left. So that was Enfield Bridge that I was just stood on. And I'm now following this uh, quite broad path where I'll be making a judgment soon on whether to go to Tombridge or lie. Okay. Text tells us the uh, Distance seven miles. Yeah, as I was saying before I was interrupted, the um, text tells us to leave this cinder track and take this path through this metal gate. But with those notices there, and they do look quite recent as opposed to ones that haven't been taken down, I'm not going to chance my arm. So I'm going to stick on the cinder track and see if that joins up with that path because I think it does looking at the OS map. So that's point 49 of the text. And I have the uh, medway on my left with an old um, air raid shelter there. Okay, had I stayed on the field edge, that's the way I would have come, through that gate there initially. And then through this one, to join the earthen track I was on uh, as an alternative route anyway. Um, there aren't any cattle here just yet, but I can see them in the distance there. But luckily, both options now divert through this gate onto the earthen track so you go straight ahead over that footbridge there to lie or take a right through this nice tree tunnel to Tombridge and as it's four o'clock I think that's the way I'm going to go two and a half mile now to Tombridge so I've done seven and a quarter miles to this point using the uh, notes for Book one, walk 19, and henceforth I'm going to be following the GPX track back to Tombridge for SWC walk number 235 in reverse, because that's a Tombridge to Penzurst walk, I believe. And this section is called the Straight Mole which has an uncanny resemblance to an old railway line 
wonder if that is the case. Okay, Google's identifying this as dog rose. I have my uh, doubts. I thought it was bramble, but uh, dog rose is more of a pinky colour, I thought. But it, dog rose also is in the hedge here, higher up, so it probably is. Walking alongside Hazden Water with the A21 going over it in the background there. Better views from this uh, seat just to my right. So I've now got the rail line just behind this hedge on my right and the A21 ahead of me which I'm walking under. Right, there's a footpath closure there. However, a little bit to the left, seems like that's what, the way you go. Let's see if that upsets the GPX track in any way, shape or form. Hopefully not. No, this does still seem to be good. I did check um, on the Hayesden Country Park website, Facebook page actually. And Sharps Bridge is certainly open again, uh, which seemed to be an issue in November 22. Uh, it was shut, but I've read that there's lots of work being done in this uh, park, as you can see by the looks of it. Seems like a nice little voluntary job to have. Seem quite active anyway. Hoosen Tam Friendship Wood, this is called. I think I read that that was closed at some point last year as well, so maybe that's what they were doing. All this uh, conservation work. A little bit of architecture here. So that might be why the Envir Environment Agency have rerouted the path by a few yards back to uh, accommodate this flood storage area, reservoir, act works to maintain the lie flood storage area and yet they've still got a, a drought order on it at the moment or a hosepipe ban rather So I think this is the newly opened Sharps Bridge. Doesn't say so anywhere, but uh, certainly looks like it to me from the Facebook images I saw. Looks new enough, doesn't it? Wonderful. Those lovely uh, flags, yellow ones coming into flower. The old song thrush has woken up now. It's got a bit cooler. Barden Lake with its picnic tables to my right and I almost thought that was a beach over there but it's clearly not. It's for the birds. I wouldn't put it past people using it as such though. Onward journey straight ahead here. Poor old crow's so hot he's panting. Normally he'd fly off. It's only about 10 foot away from me. But uh, he's run out of energy. Don't blame you mate in that black coat. I know how you feel. Lovely bird, albeit uh, very mischievous. So leaving Barden Lake behind us, cut through a bit of woodland to rejoin the Eden Valley walk over this footbridge here. Worryingly called Lucifer Bridge. 
Yeah. SOP's not about. It's warm enough for him though. 26 degrees at the moment. The Medway's certainly in full spate. Despite the hose pipe ban. Or as a result of it most likely. Yeah, very nice place that, Hayesden Country Park. Don't remember walking through that previously. Probably have done, but I don't remember any of today's walk either, to be honest. Now on the Wheeled Way, amongst others, as we pass under the rail line now, and the jets are still with us. Had about an hour of quiescence, but they're back. Crossing playing fields towards that bridge ahead there. On the uh, fringes of Tombridge now. Squirrels are displaying unusual behaviour these days, I find. I mean, look at that one. Right out on the playing field. In the baking sun. Most unusual. I mean, if he needs a quick escape route, he hasn't really got one there. So these are the townlands of Tombridge, apparently. There's Tombridge ahead of us. Got the river on my left. I'm just following that now, round into uh, more central Tombridge. Can't remember when I was last here, to be honest. I've done walks from here, mind. So this is Tombridge Racecourse Sports Ground. A dementia friendly walk. So that's uh, going to be suitable for me in a not too distant, that's for sure. My memory is atrocious these days. Passing Tombridge Memorial Garden. So here we are, back at Tombridge. 10.3 miles actually. Uh, four hours 20 later. Very decent walk that was. Probably could have done the extra mile and included the other castle. But um, on a hot day like today it was decent enough as it was. Very good walk that. But jet noise spoiled it for the bulk of the walk, probably two thirds of it. Weather was fine, paths were good, don't remember much of it. So uh, combination of book one, walk 19, SWC 235 completed and uh, yeah I'm not sure where I'll be next week but I hope to do a walk albeit my right foot is giving me a lot of jip these days not the neuroma one that was on the left but uh, some tendinopathy on the right foot um, still a result of the bike accident so it's going to have to be dealt with and that may put me out of action pretty sure they're going to say stop doing long walks for a period of time but let's see Due to see the podiatrist on the 1st of July, so I'll get a couple more in yet, and I'm hoping to redo a walk in Essex that is massively in need of redoing down near Withenhoe. It has to be done on a Saturday though. Was hoping it to do it next weekend, but uh, unfortunately, train strikes. Well, not strikes, but there's engineering works up our way, so it can't be done then. Anyway, I'll sort something out. Until the next time, bye.